Hey everyone, today I'll be talking about my project that I've been working on for the past six months. This is my final year engineering project and this project's genuine goal was to basically have a robot that can detect temperature, humidity, light and dust and essentially take temperature and humidity and be able to control it. And we also added a small function in it which allows you to take temperatures at different levels. So today I will be explaining to you about how this entire process was built program and electric and end electrical wire. You know what? Just give me a second. I'm a little thirsty. Thank you. Alright. Now let's move on to the next part of this video where I'll show you how everything's built. Thank you. Okay guys. Let's start with a quick overview of the project and how the process in engineering even starts. The first two months of any project is basically just research and concept selection where we basically just use our best concept and then CAD the best concept, as shown here. We have to run a bunch of virtual tests as well as create the electrical schematics of how the entire robot will be wired. By doing this, we ensure that we don't run into issues once we are in the build phase. And the CAD model here is an exact model of our real prototype and this is really important because we can use the CAD model to send files out for laser cutting or 3D printing. Alright, I'll start with the programming because it's usually pretty complicated. I usually program as I connect different components together and this helps later with debugging since if something stops working I can go back a step and figure out what caused it. If you wire everything according to the schematic and then program all the components at once and then start running tests, it can be hard to debug and troubleshoot any issues. For programming, I used C++ with the Adreno IDE program to write codes to the two ESP32 microcontrollers. The only other thing I needed was some sort of server to receive the data from the sensors and an application to view everything. Thankfully, IO cloud-based servers exist. And with this IO server, I just need to set up the user interface by dragging and dropping elements such as buttons or gauges and then create digital variables that will be used to send and receive data. I'll make a link to the code in the description so for any software people that want to see it, they can. I've added loads of comments so it shouldn't be too hard to follow. If you aren't a software person, well, then I pray for you if you're going to attempt to actually read my program. Also, by the way, I'm no Einstein. The program was created by researching and learning about various different libraries and by seeing how other projects that were simpler but had similar elements to my project did it. Okay, let's move to the wiring. But first, let me show you the electrical schematic really quickly and be quiet for a bit in case you guys want to pause the video to see it. Let's move on to the electrical. So I'll start with the first system, which is controlling the sensors. The light sensor has four wires, ground, power, SDA, and SCL. The dust sensor has four wires as well, ground, LED power, power, and data. The temperature and humidity sensor has three wires, ground, power, and data. The LCD, which actually isn't shown here, uses four wires, similar to the light sensor, ground, power, SDA, and SCL. Once you know the pins of the components, all you have to really do after that is connect them to the appropriate pins on the microcontroller. And again, you can refer to the electrical schematic to see which pins I specifically used. Next, let's move on to the second system, which controls the motors and actuator that allow the scissor lift to deploy and the robot to move. The general overview is that you have a LiPo battery connected to the voltage regulator. The voltage regulator powers both of the motor driver modules. The first motor driver module powers the two motors as well as sends 5 volts of power for the ESP32 microcontroller and the second motor driver module powers the actuator. Alright, let's connect the batteries to do some testing now that the components are all put together. So as you can see, when I cover the light sensor, the lux reading goes to zero which shows me that the sensors are communicating. The temperature and humidity sensor is also giving a correct reading. I already confirmed that off camera. Now let's test the motors and yep, this seems to be working just fine. The voltage regulator is also giving an accurate reading of the voltage and amps being used. Okay, and the actuator works too. Alright great, so now we just need to start building the robot chassis. So just to show you guys some issues, 
This is the first motor mount design which was 3D printed and it definitely didn't hold the motor securely. The motor is rated at 18 kilograms time centimeter of torque and this motor mount actually ended up breaking off camera during testing. So later in the video you'll see the new and improved design which actually took 7 iterations to get to. Alright, the robot chassis is fairly straightforward so I'll speed this up a bit. For reference, the clear parts are laser cutouts of acrylic and the wooden pieces are laser cutout of MDF all using the CAD. The little legs are off of Amazon and, the, and they were perfect for what we needed. The new motor mounts as you can see are, are a much more secure design and have very tight tolerances to ensure the motor can't move in the X, Y, Z planes or even rotate within the shaft itself. So as you can see each platform is just sitting on top of each other and we made it this way so everything is modular and replaceable. So the platform can just come off by lifting with a bit of force. Yeah, uh, ignore the rear for now, also the robot is programmed opposite at the moment. The curved end is actually the rear, since it's two wheel driven we wanted to be pulling the third wheel rather than pushing it. Okay, time to paint! Alright, so now it's time to assemble it up again and also add the electronics onto the robot properly. Another test to make sure it still works after putting everything back together. Okay, now you guys saw in the beginning of the video the scissor lift going up and down. Well, we have two sensors on that to collect data and the wires for that need to be long enough. So let's add 7 feet of wiring. This number is not random and calculated. Basically, the lift goes approximately 5 feet high and since the wire is looped around the scissor lift, you need to provide enough slack so that the wire doesn't rip on its way down or up. We also added clips near the bottom of the wire so that if needed we can disconnect the entire wire. Alright, I added a switch between the LiPo battery and the voltage regulator because having a robot without an on and off switch is a recipe for a big disaster. Okay, so I added the front of the robot where the fans are going to be mounted, or one of the fans. Also the fans are just USB powered and they're connected to the power bank which is also powering the sensor's microcontroller. Okay, so here I added a little control system where instead of the motors going straight to the top speed, they slowly ramp up to that speed. Time to make the actuator mount. It's 3D printed but we have to manually counterboard the hole where the main bolt will run through. Time to assemble the system. Had to make the hole slightly bigger to ensure fitment. 
We did most of this off camera, but it's just a bunch of links connecting together using the 3D printed parts. Cutting the threaded rod because it'll be going through the rear of the actuator mount later to hold it. We are adding some epoxy in the motor mount because over time the 3D printed part is fatiguing and the motor was able to spin within the motor mount itself. This epoxy solution worked absolutely great. Also adding wire casings for any loose wires to make a clean finish. Time to start making the casing for the whole robot. Last up is to make the holes for the switches and voila, the robot is now officially complete. Thank you guys for watching my video. Please like and subscribe. I have now some shots for you guys for this robot just so you guys can see the end product.